And on top of this one, write down estimating. And again, please, when you put your notes back in your notebook, if you just put them in where they belong alphabetically, you don't have to worry about taking a long time to organize them. Estimating is a lot like rounding, but you have to use rounded numbers to estimate. Again, it is, we use this one close is good enough. Again, it's not exact, but sometimes close is just fine. All right, for example, uh, if you said, uh, let's see what this guy says. Uh, if I was looking to add up all of the, estimate how many upper graders there were. I can tell you the exact number. Is that what, is there, what, 28 of you? 29. 29. 29 fifth graders. There's 28? Yeah. Oh, there's, there, are 20, uh, there are 21 sixth graders. There are 12 seventh graders, and there's 21 eighth graders. Now, yeah, 12. Now, doing that math, if I was only asking you to estimate, you really don't want to sit down and just kind of do that. You would round all these numbers to what we call kind of like compatible numbers, something that makes sense. Like 29, you'd say, okay, that's close to 30. 21, that's close to 20. 12 is close to 10. And 21 is close to 20. And it's pretty easy to add 30 plus 20 plus 10 plus 20. What is that? 50, 60, 70, 80. 80 would be our estimated number for upper grade kids. Or maybe you're doing that because you're buying the whole upper grade. Um, or or you don't need to know exact numbers because they come in boxes. What actually was the real number? Just for fun. 29 and 21 and 12 and 21. Well, these two together, what, 50, 62? Uh, it's actually 83, I believe. But 80 is awful close, and that might be good enough for you know, the thing that you're doing. Another example. Um, let's see what the book asks. Uh, oh yeah, here's here's one. Write this problem down. A row of bleachers can seat ninety six people. Uh, if you have eight rows. Or just estimate how many people will fit in eight rows. And again, the story problem, so it's probably good. It's probably good to draw something down here. But notice it says to estimate. You have eight rows of bleachers, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight. How many are in each row? 96. Now, understand this, young fifth graders. This is where some people get mis make mistakes. You use rounding to make estimating easy. Sometimes I see kids actually do this. They'll go, oh, well, 96 times 8, they will get a number like 48, 4, 72, uh, what is that, 768, and then they'll round the answer. That's not what you want because you had to do a lot of work there. Okay, You want to make these numbers easy to deal with. So instead of using 96, 96 is awful close to what easy number to work with. Yeah, so you make all of these 100s and you have 8 100s, which you can do pretty easily. 100 times 8 is yeah, 800. This is the way to estimate. This is doing all the work and then rounding your answer. Okay, you want to do this to make your life easy. Okay. So always when, when, when they ask you to 
estimate, use rounded numbers to make your mathematical life so much easier. It should put a smile on your face when they tell you to estimate, because estimate means you don't have to get all the way down to the nitty-gritty math and do all the really hard stuff. Uh, and they will tell you, they will say to use compatible numbers, compatible, compatible, compatible numbers. And that means get numbers that are close. Okay. Get numbers that are close. Get numbers that make sense. You know, don't round 96 to 0, because that ain't going to make any sense. When you do 8 times 0, you're going to get 0. You want to get numbers that are just hard enough that you can work with and get a good number, but not too way off from your answer. Just like you need to do this part there. Ephraim, what's your question, sir? Not at this point. Maybe after I give you your assignment there. Unless it's a humongous emergency. Uh, uh, one more. One more. No, one more story, Bob. Not another one. Bob's car. Bob's car went 129 miles on four gallons of gas. On four gallons of gas. How, or estimate, how far the car would go on just one gallon. Now, first of all, you have to ask yourself. So here, here you go. The car went 129 miles, right? Let's just make this 129 miles. And it took four gallons of gas. So here's one, two, three, four. Here's your gallons of gas. First of all, what type of problem? What, how would you get the answer to the problem first before we think about estimating? How much would one gallon get you? If you take 129 and cut it up into four pieces, what, what, what type of problem is that? So you're going to divide four into something. And you want to make 129 a number that 4 goes into easily. So that's where it takes a lot of good work. What number would 4 probably go into, Brady? 130? I don't think 4 actually goes into 130. You take this and this, and you get a leftover of 10. Well, 132 probably would get you 12, and it would get you 33. You could use that. That would be acceptable. Or... 128 would also work because 4 goes evenly into that. So you kind of get your choice. Which one would actually be closer? Would it be closer to go 129 to 128 or 129 to 132 was our other choice? But again, the nice thing with estimating fifth grade is you can always come up to me and say, hey, if it's estimating, it doesn't have to be exact. So there's sometimes Sometimes there's a little wiggle room as to what the right answers are, as long as they're close. I'll say, yeah, as long as you're estimating that's close enough, and I'll give it to you. Either one of these answers I would have taken, because there's no, estimating is not an exact science all the time. It's not right on the money all the time.